Okay, now we need to say a few things about the coordinate plane. Uh, remember our earlier example of a person diving down to a depth d, and we said the pressure that he experiences is equal to 9.8 times d. So we have this equation relating these two variables, p and d. Now that was this particular case of the person diving. We don't always have p and d. What's much more common is to have two variables and simply call them x and y. So we often have an equation which relate, relates x and y. And for example, you can write this in your notes. Let's just do a real simple equation. y equals 3x. Okay, in this case, y is a function of x. That means that the value we get for y, imagine putting a number in here for x and doing this calculation and getting out a value for y. So x is the input, y is the output, and the value we get for y depends on the value we put in for x. And that is the key idea of a function, so I'm going to write that out. The value we get for y depends on... the value we get for the value we put in for x and that is the defining aspect of a function put in put in one value and get out another and one other key idea of a function is that we only get out one value at most we will never get more than one value out for a function now earlier, when we were looking at pressure and depth, we made a graph with p and d axes. Now we have x and y, so we're going to make a graph with x and y axes. So come down here on your page and just draw this, and this is the standard x-y coordinate system. We'll make a horizontal axis, which we call x, and the vertical axis, which we call y. And it's pretty standard practice to put your positive x values over here to the right and the negative ones to the left. And the positive, x value, positive y values up at the top and negative ones at the bottom. And then there's usually some marks, some numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Or it might be scaled differently. It might be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And um, markings going on in the negative direction. And then also little tick marks, some scale of some sort vertically as well. And this is called the XY plane or the coordinate plane or sometimes called the Cartesian coordinate system or the Cartesian plane named after Rene Descartes who developed this uh, back in the 1600s. And he developed these early ideas on dealing with functions. And these x and y axes divide the whole plane up into four quadrants and they're usually numbered with Roman numerals like this quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4 so starting over here where x and y are both positive and going around counterclockwise now that should not be new to you you probably saw the coordinate plane in Algebra 1 you certainly should have, should have but the key, the key idea here is that we use the coordinate plane to draw a graph that shows the relationship between two variables, usually x and y. And that's what I have in the notes here. And typically y is the dependent variable. And then x is the independent variable. So in the, in the example we were looking at earlier, the very simple example of y equals 3x, y depends on x, so y is the dependent variable. In the case of p is 9.8d, the value for p depends on what we put in for d, so in this case p is the dependent variable. Now when we're putting numbers in here for x, we can put pretty much any number we want in for x and calculate, very simple calculation, calculate the corresponding value for y. All the possible input values for a function are called the domain 
of that function. And in something like this, the domain is any real number. Any number on the number line you could put in there for x. But sometimes the domain is restricted. Like in this case, pressure is 9.8 d. Well, what is d? d is the depth below the surface of the water. How deep you are. It doesn't make sense to put in negative numbers for d right there d would only be positive numbers so in this case any number for d would not be allowed only positive numbers and all the numbers that you could put in would be the domain so the domain of this function is all positive numbers could go in for d the domain of this function is any number at all any real number at all could be put in for x then all the values you get out all the values you calculate for y or over here, all the possible values you could calculate for p, that's called the range of the function. So those are two terms you'll run across in the rest of your math studies, the domain and range of a function.